Well hello and welcome to my latest video. I have noticed looking at the data and incidentally uh, YouTube provides you with endless absolutely oodles of data much of it produced by Dominic Cummings apparently a little political reference for you there and I've noticed from the data that when I wear the uh, Che Guevara Samuel L Jackson Kangol hat my views go up uh, because people obviously like the look so if you like the look viewers here it is well what are we talking about today we're talking about e-bikes and yes what does Julian think Julian thinks that e-bikes is the second most wonderful invention ever the most wonderful invention of course being the bicycle so the addition of electricity to a bicycle I think is a fabulous advancement and why not now I made a few a few little notes here I don't often refer to my notes here but I was thinking about all of the items that over the last uh, uh, four or five centuries we have electrified and they include an electric razor yes gentlemen and ladies uh, do you remember when you used to shave yourself with a cutthroat razor and now you use an electric razor um, you used to cut your grass with a hand mower I used to cut my grass with a hand mower and a scythe now I have an electric mower I have an electric tin opener I have an electric carving knife do you remember back in the or when was it probably the early 70s uh, electric carving knives became a real thing uh, and in fact there were a number of very brutal murders that were committed with electric carving knives which is uh, one of the contributory factors why you don't see them around so much anymore I've still got mine I didn't use it for murdering I, I have and again a number of viewers have commented on this the fact that I have an electric watch and electric scissors yes I went to the barber the other day and he cut my hair with a pair of electric scissors I have an electric coffee grinder I used to have to I used to have a mortar and pestle you remember that I never knew which bit was the mortar and which bit was the pestle uh, but you would put the coffee beans into the uh, into the mortar or was it the pestle and then you'd bang them like that bang them bang them bang them bang them bang them, bang them uh, with the pestle or was it the mortar and that's how you got your ground coffee which you could then put into your Nescafe jar only now I use an electric coffee grinder I have an electric toothbrush yes folks see look at those teeth you won't get teeth like that using a hand toothbrush you have to get an electric toothbrush so I sing the body electric as my friend Walt Whitman used to say what is wrong with adding electricity to absolutely everything so if we can add it to all those items why not add it to the bike and the thing about I mean I, mean, I am a gentleman as you know of a certain age I'm 64 when I'm 64 and still able to ride a bike well when I'm 74 will I still be able to ride a bike well hopefully and if I can't ride an ordinary bike I can ride an electric bike because it gives me a little bit of additional power that I will need for my scrawny 72 74 year old legs and if I can carry on until I'm 84 94 104 114 even and who knows God forbid that I should live that long but if I do I'll be riding my electric bike along electric avenue and the thing about uh, cycling well into old age and being able to do it on an electric bicycle is you still yes folks you may not know this but with an electric bike you still have to pedal and because the bike is heavier you have to pedal quite hard uh, on the flat and you get that assistance so it's not it's not like a moped where you have no uh, input at all you still have to pedal and therefore on the basis that some exercise is better than none if I can still exercise well into my dotage if that hasn't come already on an electric bike then why not and the second key reason is about health at the moment folks I enjoy good health my heart is in good condition my lungs are in relatively good condition my brain still occasionally 
functions normally every five years come election time anyway. And the rest of my limbs, the rest of my body parts, no detail needs to be spared, uh, is still working in relatively good condition. But I do accept that a time will come when things, they start to fall apart. They start to go on the slippery slope downhill. And if an electric bike can help me overcome some of those health issues, some of those things that prevent me turning the pedals as fast as I would like to on a normal bike, some of those things that help people with disabilities who would not otherwise be able to indulge in that wonderful hobby of cycling, uh, be able to indulge in the wonderful hobby of cycling, then I say bring on the electric bicycle. Climb every mountain, ford every stream. Do you remember that song from The Sound of Music? Little, little story uh, aside. When my daughter was uh, nine, nine years old, eight or nine years old, anyway, we were big fans of the movie The Sound of Music. Was I a bigger fan than she was? Yes, just possibly. So I took her on our first overseas trip and we went to Salzburg and we had a wonderful time and we danced hand in hand through the streets of Salzburg and we sang the songs from The Sound of Music and it was one of the best trips I've ever had uh, in my life. So climb every mountain. Why is that relevant? Not because electric bicycles appeared in The Sound of Music. They did not. Although there was a scene on bicycles, I seem to remember. So it's not entirely outside the bounds of possibility. But the thing about climb every mountain is get an electric bike and you can climb mountains that you couldn't do on an ordinary bike. Now there are uh, what are there? There is one mountain in particular, the Angliru in Spain. Went on a trip to Spain with Marmot Tours, a wonderful cycling holiday company. And I could not, folks, yes, a terrible admission. I could not get up the Angliru. It was too steep for me. But now, now that I have ordered my electric bike, I shall be going back to Spain, to the Angliru next year and I shall be up that sod of a mountain like a mountain goat on an electric bicycle if a mountain goat was on an electric bicycle. So it will allow me to conquer things that I couldn't conquer before. Now you'll say, well, that's cheating, Julian. No, 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 no. If somebody else has stronger legs than me and can get up the Angliru under their own steam, then why should I not have some artificial assistance in the form of an electric bicycle and get me up the Angliru? Now, when you're out and you're out on your bike and you're riding with your mates and your mates are that little bit faster than you and you just can't quite keep up with them, get an electric bike and you can keep up with your mates. Yes, no longer. Are you the sad fat sack at the back? You are now the speedy half wheeler at the front of the group, thrashing, thrashing, uh, figuratively, thrashing your mates because you can keep up with them and not just keep up with them, you can beat them. And is that not a good feeling? Artificial assistance or not, you tell me that it isn't and see if I believe you. Now, my kids. Uh, are not really kids anymore. They're adults. But if they were younger, and if you have young children, get rid of your 8x8 Ineos Grenadier. Get rid of your Land Rover Discovery with the nine seats. Get rid of your car and get yourself an electric cargo bike and put your kids in it and put the shopping in it and put all the stuff in it that you carry in your Ineos Grenadier as you destroy the planet and cycle around because my friend Michael tells me that one electric bicycle or rather one Ineos Grenadier 8x8 is the equivalent of damage to the planet of 100,000, yes, count them, 100,000 electric bicycles. So if only a small proportion of my audience, my wonderful YouTube audience, were to ditch their dreadful 
gas-guzzling Chelsea tractor motor cars, and I have four of them, and switch to electric bicycles, the world will be a better place. And the next reason is, the best reason at all when it comes to bicycles, why shouldn't you? You wanted a gravel bike, and you bought a gravel bike. You wanted a Pinarello, and you bought a Pinarello. You wanted to dredge something out of the canal, and you dredged something out of the canal. You wanted a fold-up Brompton, and you got a fold-up Brompton. So why shouldn't you have an electric bike? You're entitled. The E in e-bike doesn't stand for electric. No, no, no. It stands for entitled bike. You want it. You can have it. You can buy it. Get it. My mantra is, and you may have heard this before in some of my other videos, life is short by the electric bike. Marketing. Marketing is good. Greed is good. Hype is good. PR is good. Electric bikes are sold on back of marketing. Get an electric bike. And the freedom of the countryside is yours with a little faint whirring in the background. But you can get 100 miles with an additional battery. You can get 200 miles with an additional four batteries. You can get 300 miles with an additional eight batteries. You need a little trailer to carry the batteries, but who cares? Get out there. See the world. Go for a swim in Lake Me. Not, not with your battery, not with the power on anyway. That could be a little bit dangerous. But get out there up onto the ridge, get up into the high mountains, get up into the wilds of unbounded Iceland, the Norwegian ice flows and the Arctic, the Antarctic, if you can find a power point which you will need to power up your electric bicycle, but get out there into the Hindu Kush and see the world and be the first to circumnavigate the world on an electric bicycle, even though it takes you 10 years because you keep on having to stop and recharge the battery, but so what? Be the first if you can beat me, so I'm going. Now, my electric bicycle, and it will not surprise you to learn that I have got the top of the range. Yes, I have got the Idios Grenadier of the electric bicycle mo uh, world, and it has four modes. It has eco mode. Eco mode is where it gives a little bit of assistance, but just enough so you wouldn't notice I was doing it. It then got E club. And E club gives me enough power to keep up and get ahead of my local club run, which is the Old Portly and Cycling Club in South East London. The third mode is called E knob. And if you are, or have you ever been, or have you ever wanted to be an e-knob, which is a fast cyclist who beats all your mates and is always the first up the hill, and he was always the first to the coffee shop, even though you don't put your hand in your pocket and don't buy a cup of coffee. Ah, mode three is e-knob, but e4, e4 is called e Sean Kelly. I went for Sean Kelly. I could have got, I could have got Chris Froome. I could have got Ian Stannard. I could have got Fabian Cancela. I could even have got, yes, folks, E. Lance Armstrong. But that one, <laughs> they take it away from you after a while. So I went for E. Sean Kelly, and it is the business. If you want to ride like a hard Irishman and win all the races, then you switch it to E. Sean Kelly, and they'll never catch you, and you still can't understand the commentary, but it is a wonderful, a wonderful piece of kit, and if you're thinking why you haven't seen the unboxing, well, I'm not sharing with my e-bike with just about anybody, so you're going to have to wait a little while before you see that, so if you haven't yet taken the plunge, if you haven't yet spoken to your significant other and said an e-bike is calling me, darling, then hear the sighing of that body electric. Your e-bike wants you. Your e-bike is waiting there in the showroom when the bike shops are open. Go and buy one. Yes, you know it makes sense. And you heard it here first. Thanks for watching and see you next time.